Hi everyone, my name is Heidi and I'm coming to you from sunny Florida. Today is January 29th and it is a Monday. It is a beautiful sunny day here in Florida, but it is quite chilly. Boo, it's cold. It's in the mid 50s. I know other people up north and out west are freezing their petunias off, but here that is cold for Florida. So I'm wearing long sleeves. If you are new, thank you for stopping by. And if you're returning, welcome back. Um, so if you'd like to find me other than YouTube, I'm on Ravelry and Instagram as Yarnit Heidi. And if you like this episode, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, I'd love it if you do that too. And what else can I tell you? Anything I talk about today will be described down below in that description box. It's in the um, section where it says my episode, and then it will say more, and you just click down on that, and it'll give you all the information about what I'm talking about. And what else can I tell you? Oh, the other thing is, if you want to know anything about me, um, yarn-related, knitting-related, crochet-related, corset-related, or just personal stuff, you can comment below. So today, I have everything that I love to do. Um, I have knitting, I have crochet, and I have cross stitch to show you. So let's get moving. We're going to go on to finished objects first. Okay, my first finished object, I'm wearing it. It is a hat by um, Sarah and Jordan. It's called Same As It Ever Was, and uh, I'll take it off and show it to you. Don't mind my hair, it's a little goofy now. This one is just like a muscle borough hat. If um, if you know, you know what a muscle borough hat is. If you're not, this is a hat where you actually make two hats and it's like making a long tube and one side goes into the other side. And that's exactly what this does. I'll show you and I'll pull it out and then it goes into each other. It's a double knit. It's like wearing two hats for one. It's super warm. And I wanted this hat for me because I've made several and for some reason they aren't fitting properly, but they weren't um, muscle bars, they were other hats. And I seem to get into this habit of wanting to finish it and not making it long enough. So I said, let's try this. Uh, it, it fits great. In a way, I wish I'd still made it longer so I could put a brim on it but it's okay, it looks good even without the brim. So the deets on this, um, the like I said, it's by um, Sarah Jordan, same as it ever was, is the name of the pattern. The yarn is um, by Earth Yarns, the Merino Sock. I used a size, what size? Size two needle. And um, did I make it a small? I don't even know how many, what, I. it was a small, I think it was a small size and I did it on magic glue and the this is so much similar to the muscle book the only thing is on the top it has like a swirly type look and the increases are a little bit different than the muscle burrow and so I did the increases and then I just knit for 17 uh inches and then I did the other side of the crown and that was it so it came out pretty good and I'm pretty happy. This is gonna be for me. Brown is my color. I love brown. It looks good on me, I guess, with my coloring and my hair. And um, yeah, it's a keeper for me. Usually I'm making something to give to somebody, but this one is for me. Because every time I go up north, I bring one of my hats and they never fit well on me. They're either too small or too big. So this one's a good one. So that's my first one. The second one I have is I love how these came out. They're called um, the Zigzagular Socks. Look how cool they are. I just love them. And you do a left and a right one, so they're not like uh, the same pattern for both. I mean, they are, but the opposite. So you do have to pay attention. This is a pattern where you do have to pay attention. It's just like, it's not like knit, knit, knit and um, you know, you can just watch things. You have to pay attention. But it was, it's not hard. It was just, you have to pay attention because there's cables and there's a, um, a chart up to a certain amount of rows. 
By the way, it's a free pen. It's called the Zigzag Glass Socks by uh, Susie White from the Prairie Girl Designs. I actually love this pen. It is not hard. You just have to do the cables and do a chart up to, um, you know, I think 20 rows. So I did a size one, which is a fifth, not size one, excuse me. The needles I used was size one, 2.25. I used two circulars, my favorite way of knitting, anything that is in a small circumference. And what I did was, oh, the, lot, the yarn is Lion Brand Sock Ease and the colorway is Mojito. But I did knit for me a size small, which is 56 stitches. So I did, um, for the cuff, I did 15 rows. That's my usual. It's a two by two ribbing. Uh, for the leg, what I did is I did three repeats of the pattern. I didn't count rows for the leg. That's what I love about charts. If you know how many repeats you do, you don't really have to count. You just know your repeats, but you do have to count your rows for the chart. So I did three rows of that. Then I went to the heel, which is slip stitch and gusset. My best fitting, best way of um, doing a heel. The only thing is, um, even though I did a size small, 56 stitches, for the heel part, I do 32 because I have an extremely high instep. These socks fit me snug the way they should, but if I did a 28 heel flap, stitch heel flap, it would even be snugger. So it's perfect with the 32. So then for the foot, I did 44 rows and then I did a rounded toe. Is there anything different? So with the um, with the foot part, I kept track of how many chart repeats I did, which is three times after I got to the heel, three times, and then like eight rows of the pattern. Then I did the toe, which is a rounded toe. I love these. I think they came out so awesome. Um, I could give them away, but I really love them. I don't know. I've been giving away socks a lot lately. So, um, and being that it's been cold here, I've been wearing socks. Like today I'm wearing one of my pairs of socks and a lot of them are shorties and I don't have long ones like this. So, a gift to me. Okay, the next one I have is, excuse me for reaching over, is, I don't know, I wanted something simple, something I didn't have to think about. Not that this was that simple, but I wanted a quickie. And I didn't want to have to, um, I, it was like a palate cleanser because lately I've been in a little bit of rut where I'm not enthusiastic about uh, doing my projects. So maybe something different would spark that, spark that interest again, which it did work because now I want to make all the things especially Valentine's. I just love Valentine's Day. I love anything with hearts. I don't even know if it's Valentine's Day that I love so much. I love anything with hearts. And because Valentine's Day is all about hearts, that's why I love it. Anyway, this is a doily I made. You can see the hearts in it. It's a little small. I'll tell you about that in a minute. It's, um, it's called the Heart Desire Doily by Your Inspirations. I used a 1.90 millimeter hook which is really small. And the yarn is from Stash, but it's a cotton yarn, like a crochet cotton yarn. And uh, it was, for doing a doily, this was an easy one. I looked up beginner, easy, even free doily pattern, and this one was perfect. The only thing is, um, it's a little bit small for my liking. It would be good for like a coaster, but I wanted it a little bit bigger. So maybe next time I will go up a couple of hook size, but then will it be too holy and not so delicate looking? I don't know. So I'll have to think, I'll try it. No harm in trying and see, cause this took one day, one night, a, couple, a few hours and that was it. And crocheting is not, I'm not that great at it. So I tried, I bought a pattern for another doily. I couldn't do it. They were talking about something I could not understand. So I scrapped it. And I just went with easy and something else just to get a doily in. And it was on my make nine list. I want to do some doilies, maybe give them as gifts or maybe to decorate my house a little bit. I don't know. So the next finished object is, I finished it last night. It really took one day. And um, I went to my local yarn shop and a couple of us are doing it. 
because people all, the few that were at the yarn shop that I was, that were doing this belongs to the Love and Stitches membership with Nitty Natty. So this month they're doing doodles. Um, a doodle is pretty much customizing your own cowl, scar scarf, uh, a coffee cozy. And the designer who is Jamie Lomax from Pacifico, um, she makes all these motifs kind of theme related and you pick out your motifs, you pick out your border, and then you put it together. You pick out your colors. She doesn't tell you what colors to use or what she used. You pick out your colors and you kind of like design your own item, your own garment, which is so cool. So I did this, it's, it's a coffee cozy and you put it around a coffee. And this is the colors I picked, you know, like for Valentine's. The motif I got off of her Valentine's doodle and she's got all motifs related to Valentine's Day, bow and arrow, hearts in all different shapes and forms, uh, borders with little heart, little hearts. So I just wanted this pattern with these hearts and this pink here. And the yarn is from my stash. So I didn't, it didn't cost me much. And I picked out this border up here that she had. She has numerous borders you could use. So I picked that one. And then I picked out this heart motif. All of this is included in the heart motif. And then the border and then the ribbing. And it's really such a cool idea. You customize it yourself. And that's what I did. You just pick and choose. And um, yeah, so the pattern is actually from her like autumn coffee cozy pattern of how you do um, the ribbing, the motif, and then another ribbing and a border. And then I just do some motifs from the Valentine's doodle. So much fun. The only thing is I'm gonna do another one because I, I'm a loose knitter on any given day. But with color work, I am so, so tight. I don't know what it is, why it's so tight. This is extremely tight. I didn't um, block it yet. I don't know how much more it's gonna get bigger. It barely fits over anything. Um, so I gotta try it again. And uh, I used to the suggested size for the Coffee Cozy and it's still so small, so small. So I don't know if I should go up one needle or two needles. So let me just tell you the particulars. The needle size that I have, hold on, I, that I use, oh, I know. I used a four for the ribbing and a five for the body and the border. The yarn, and what did I do it on? Oh, I did it on two circulars because it's more circumference, so much easier. I don't get a jog at the ends from doing two circulars, whereas a magic loop, I always get a jog. I don't know why. And then the stash was from a Moon Glow Yarn Company. Uh, I had a lot left over from a um, Stephen West shawl that I made. So I used that and um, I love it, but I'm gonna to have to do another one because this is, serves no purpose whatsoever if it doesn't fit anything. And I'd love to make them as gifts, you know? So maybe it could be a nice hand warmer or a wristlet, whatever you call them. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. I don't know, wear it on Valentine's Day like that. I don't know, I love it anyway. It's so fun to do and this is quick. If anybody's interested in doing a doodle, I highly suggest doing the Coffee Cozy first. It took a couple of hours, you know, a few hours and boom, done. So anyway, if any of you guys have done doodles and can give me advice on how to not make this so tight, I think I have to go up maybe two, two size needles. I don't know. It's frustrating because I'm loose in any way and then on the color work, I am not loose at all. Okay, we did all the uh, finished objects. We're going to move on to works in progress. All right, I have uh, a few works in progress I want to talk about. Uh, let me just take a sip. All right, the first one is, let me see what I have here. I got to look at my notes because, okay. The first one is, and some of you have seen, if you're new, you'll see it now. It's called the Whidbey Bag by Wool and Pine. And I really wanted to do this with minis, with Advent. 
and I was loving it. And then I lost some steam, like my enthusiasm with it. And I'll tell you why. Okay, so this is it so far. This is the bag. See all the different colors? Now, I used um, a size, what size? I'm so forgetful now. What size did I do? For the Whippy bag, uh, size four needles. And I, um, the black yarn, the main color of the black yarn is by Cascade Yarns, Anchor Bay, it's black. And then all these colors are from Ruby and Roses, uh, Advent of 2022. Now I did, I goofed up so bad on this, but I couldn't help it. The black is really hard to see and you have to weave in these colors. And of course I missed some and this and that. That's why you have all these dot spots seen and this and that, but it's a bag. It's still pretty and colorful. And I stopped here because I don't mind the bottom having some black. I kind of like that. So when it gets full, the back hang, the black hangs down on the bottom and then you have all this color on the top. So that was all right, the weaving. And I kind of got disappointed because I couldn't see that good. I wasn't catching it. I just gave up on it. I just did it any old way. And it bothers me because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist with my, my knitting. But it's still, it's a bag and nobody's going to be like, oh, you skipped this weave and whatever. I know. Sometimes I want to say, should I just scrap it? But no, it's a bag. But now I'm at the stinky part of the bag. I'm at the part where um, I have to do an eye cording for, to make the uh, straps of 60 inches. Ugh, I don't want to do it. I should really do it on Zoom. Even on Zoom, I don't want to do it. So 60 inches and two of them. Now, I don't know if I will need 60 inches of a strap. You put it through here and then you, it has to connect to the bottom. Maybe I do because you, you double up on it. Ugh, <laughs> I don't want to do it. I thought maybe I can get away with maybe 48 inches, but I don't know. I'll see. I'll double it up and see when I get to that. I only did about seven, eight inches, not worth showing you guys of the eye cord. I really don't want to do it, but it, I'm almost at the finish line. I have to finish it. So is there anything else to tell you about this? No, nope, that's it. So I do love the colors. Ruby and Rose's colors are so beautiful. They're so vibrant, just gorgeous. So I got to get through this. I have to do it. Know what I'm going to do? It My 30 minutes a day and then all the time. I thought it takes one, two, three. It's just, I don't want to do it. All right. I'd rather be just regular knitting or something else. Okay. The next one I'm really excited about. All right. It's called, um, the Shelly Swin. I have to turn over my notes. It's been, it's been three weeks since I podcasted. So I'm a little rusty. I'm loving this. I hope it comes out good. This is called the, um, the Shelly Pullover. I thought it was called the Shelly Sweater, but it's not. Let me try to get all my strings out of this way. It is so pretty. Um, it's right up my alley and it's going to match my same as it ever was. I'm hooked onto a, a progress keeper. Get off of there. What happened? This is what happens when you put things in your bag. There's a fairy in there that messes things up. Okay. This is it. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, this is the Shelly pullover. It is so glitzy. When I put the, now somebody at the yarn shop was making one and it looks so pretty. She was using a pink mohair and a uh, uh, pink lace. Oh, pink mohair and these things called paillettes. And that's these shiny things in here. It's a thin, thin, uh, let me see if I can get one out. It's a thin, thin stain of, it's this, very thin. See that? So you, uh, she was doing it with pink mohair and a pink kind with these sequins type things with pink. It looked gorgeous. So we all saw it, we all were influenced and um, I, it was gonna be very expensive what she, what she used, very expensive. So I said, let me see if there's something, you know, comparable with it that's not as costly. So I found 
um, it's not a mohair, but it's like an alpaca lace. You use a lace. She used a uh, mohair and a paillette. It's like two laces together. So I'm using a Cascades um, alpaca silk. Is it called alpaca silk? Let me see. Um, oh boy. It's the yarn Cascade Llama Lace and the color is Coco Llama Lace and it's Baby baby Llama. And then I then I um, did another string of the paillettes. So it goes together. You do those two together and it comes out like this. So the, the Shelly Pullover is by Eri, I can't even say this last name, Shimizu. Forgive me if I said it wrong. I don't know how to say it. Eri Shimizu. That's who I designed it. Size nine needles. I swatched this. I swatched it. I was way, way off. Because it's kind of, you know, it, the stitches aren't really even when you're doing this paillettes and the llama lace. So I said, with what I got, I had to go up a size needle and go up a size sweater. So I did that. And um, it's supposed to be very, and it has 19 inches positive ease. I tried to sign. It doesn't look like it's going to be 19 inches of positive ease. But if it's loose or even if it's a tiny bit stuck, I'm all right with that. I think it looks so elegant. And, you know, people are like, ah, oh, the brown. But you know what? With this shiny stuff, this might be too nice to wear just, you know, going, you know, to a friend's house or whatever. This is like going out to a dance or going out to a fancy restaurant. We'll see how it looks at the end. I tried it on a couple of times. So far, so good. I'm uh, going to try it again. That's the key. Keep trying it on because my gauge was off. I try it this way, and right now it seems good. And if it's a little loose, that's good. It says 19 inches positive ease. I don't care if it's two inches positive ease, it's still gonna look good. So that was my Shelly uh, pullover. Anything else to tell you about it? Just I used a size, I um, went to a size two sweater, and, um, and that's it. Just two yarns held together. All the information will be down below because I love that thing. Okay, the next thing is a crochet item. Uh, I have exciting news. My niece uh, is expecting her first baby. Actually, it's the first baby of any of my nieces and nephews. This is really heartwarming because it was my it's my brother's daughter. He passed away in 2022. And um, I'm so excited that there's gonna be a grandbaby in, on that side. So of course I was like, I have a whole collection because that's waiting for my my grandchildren. You know, I keep making things and putting it aside. So I wanted to make something different for this baby and I wanted a blanket. I made this rainbow ripple blanket years ago that I've saved. I looked, I, I got it again. For some reason I can't get it because I'm not the greatest crocheter. So I went on to um, YouTube and this, this um, design or this, um, I don't know what she's called. Well, her name is Be Bella Coco. She is phenomenal with teaching tutorials on YouTube for left-handed and right-handed crocheters. And her tutorials are the best, especially for left-handed. So I wanted to make this rainbow ripple. Uh, it's like a 12-point uh, shaped blanket. And I couldn't get it. So I went on to Bella Loca and she has a similar one. So I'm following her exactly by timestamps. And now I pretty much know the pattern by heart. It's called the 12 Point Star by Bella Loco. Bella, Bella Coco. So I will link up down below. Hopefully I'll remember. Um, you know, I'll link down her YouTube video. So this is it so far. And um, yeah, so it's a 12 point star. This is the yarn that I got because I wanted something not too costly and um, something colorful. I wish it would get colorful already, but this is the Lions Brand Mandela and it's a big bundle. This should make the whole blanket, this one big bundle. So I'm gonna make that. The size hook I'm using is, is it an H? Yep, it's an H. And um, yeah, so this is, 
this is becoming mindless too now so i could um talk and work on that and i just started it last week and it's going pretty quickly let's see if there's anything else i need to tell you uh no but if you want to learn how to crochet and you're a left-handed and you have troubles check out bella coco on youtube she is phenomenal one of the best that i've seen and it's hard to find somebody to teach left-handed so that is it the last one i have for my works in progress is a cross stitch one again i saw this on instagram I had to have it because it's valentine's day related or hearts related and um you'd think it would be a quick fix but it's taken me a while to do this one i guess because you need to dedicate a few hours if you want to get something done with cross stitching so this is called um let me see if i have the okay this is it it's called be mine by the camping stitcher and what i'm happy about this is the linen is from my stash the floss is from my stash it didn't cost me anything to make this at all except for the pattern because i love the pattern so I, I don't mind that and i'm supporting the designers so i'm happy about that so the floss and the linen i happen to get somebody who i know who i um go to the yarn shop with she used to be a cross stitcher and she had so much that she was selling and i bought like almost all the floss and i don't even know what uh brand it is and she had some linen and i took this off of it and i just cut it because it doesn't require a lot of linen so when I'm done with this, um, I'm going to, I don't know if this is, tw I think this is 28 count linen. I'm not sure. I'm going to back it with like a, a heart type of fabric, red or something with hearts. And I'm going to make a little pillow out of it. My goal to do is, um, I know lots of people when they make these little um, pillows, they put like in a basket and they put it out during the season to uh, decorate. So I want to do that. I want to have all these little they call them smalls, all these smalls of cross stitch and put them in a basket and display them or a beautiful plate, whatever. So that's my goal. But with the way I'm going, I hope this is only number one. So we'll see what happens. I just love doing it. Anything with hearts. Oh, if you hear a siren, so this, I'm sorry, a siren's coming by. Hate that sound anyway. Okay, we are done with works in progress. Let's move on to acquisitions all right i need another sip only one acquisition and that's it this is going to be a short episode there's not much that i have all right oh sorry for the crinkling okay this again i got influenced on um probably instagram this is a uh, yarn from heidi and lana she makes these such cute coasters. I made one for Halloween with um, a ghost and something else. I made Halloween coasters from her. Now she has a Valentine's one and with a heart. I'll show a picture of it. So these are the colors that she used. So now that I am showing you guys, I got to get them started. So that will be another fun thing to start. The other coasters were um, fun to make and I imagine these are going to be similar. So that's my next uh, project to do when I get off the phone with you guys. I'm going to um, wind that and start doing the coasters. I don't know if I should hand wind those or use my, uh, use my Swift and wind that. We'll see. And that's all my acquisitions. I don't have much. I'm really trying to hold back on buying so much. I have a bag coming because hearts valentine's oh, i can't control myself because i only have like one valentine's day bag i need a few because all these projects are in different miscellaneous bags so that will be it for my acquisitions and if i see something that you know sometimes once a month i want to treat myself so maybe i will i don't know i'm never saying never because i can't control myself and it gives me joy so let's move on to life For life, not a heck has been going on at all. The biggest news I can tell you, and it just happened, is I am retiring from work. 
I've been working most of my life. Uh, life was too short. I was starting to get, you know, uh, you know, a little bit burnt out. And I want to be flexible with my plans. Me and Bill are going to uh, eventually buy a little place up north uh, and for a couple of months to stay up there. And we want to start looking. And um, I want to enjoy the rest of my life, especially since uh, my brother passed and he was young, 62. And um, life is too short to be feeling, if you could, only if you could do it, you know, if you can't, we all have to work. I had to work and uh, it's still gonna be a little rough. And that's probably why I'm like, maybe I shouldn't spend so much on uh, my acquisitions. But um, yeah, so I'm kind of excited about it. Now I could breathe and do things I wanted to do. I wanna try to get uh, more fit and healthier. I want to go to the gym more and take up some classes of Zumba. I want to play Mahjong a little bit more. And uh, what else did I want to do? Oh, and I want to volunteer. Before I used to volunteer uh, with the uh, Jewish Family Service, even though it's non-dominational, I used to visit seniors. I did that for 14 years up north and I did it for a few years down here. The person passed away that I visited. And that I did on my own. It wasn't through the Jewish Family Services. So now that I have more time, once a week, I'd like to volunteer for something, uh, give back on this earth. I feel like I should be co um, contributing to something. And that's what I'm going to look to. Well, you know, while I'm still embracing my retirement, I just did it on Thursday. It was my last day. So I, this is still new. I have to just breathe a little bit and see what I want to do and just tie up some things here. I'm going to clean my stash room because that thing is a, it's a disaster in there. So I want to do some things that I never really want to do when I'm not working, when I was working and my days off, I was like, ah, I don't feel like doing it. I want to just enjoy my days off. So now I can do those things. So that's the biggest thing. Other than that, not much is happening. We've been biking. Uh, this weekend, we went a little biking. We watched a pickleball tournament for a little bit. And um, that's it. So, but we did, now we'll, now for movies, we went to see a movie, uh, Boys in the Boat. I read the book and it was a really good bro uh, book because at the time, my son, when he was went to college, he was on the uh, Cornell rowing team. And he was a coxswain. He's small. He's small like me. And a coxswain, you have to be a certain height and a certain weight. And it was the best experience for him in college. He liked that more than going to class or anything like that. But he was a coxswain. He was, you know, he had to be in charge of all these guys in the boat, the boys in the boat. And I really learned a lot about rowing and, you know, being on a, on a rowing team. So boys in the boat is about a rowing team not well known, a bunch of kids coming from whatever, and they all wanted to do well, and they wanted to make the Olympic team, and nobody, meanwhile, they're against all these Ivy League schools, and they're like a no-name, um, you know. I mean, their school is something, but it's just a bunch of boys that go into a college that's not well known, and uh, they make it to the Olympics, and they show you all the trials and tribulations. It was great. Very entertaining. It was a two-hour movie. When it ended, I was like, wow, it's over already. That's how quick it went. I loved it. It was entertaining. It's it's definitely very abbreviated from the book. Very abbreviated. But it was still enough for me to enjoy. So I was happy about that. Sometimes I see a movie, it's like, oh, it was nothing like the book. And this kind of was very abbreviated, but it was entertaining. So go check out Boys in the Boat. I really liked it. And then the book that I just finished, loved, loved, loved it. Mad Honey by Jody Picoult and Jennifer Penny Boylan. I can't tell you much about the book because it's spoilers all throughout it. From, from the first beginning of the book to the end, there's a lot of uh, spoilers I can't tell you about. But five stars, excellent book. Check it out, read it. It's really an eye-opener. So that's all that's been going on here. So I'm not going to ramble anymore. It's so great chatting with you guys and keep catching up. I hope you're doing well. And um, I wish you peace and love and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.